day to be here. First of all, I'd like to give a round of applause to everybody that helped organize today and today's event. So if you could join me in a round of applause. I am truly humbled to be here. I uh, had the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Russ Erickson. Flew over 30 missions over Europe in World War II. Three distinguished flying crosses. Uh, it's pretty rarefied air to be able to uh, share a day like today with somebody like that. So, good morning, or I guess we're afternoon now. Good afternoon, Mayor Koch, residents of Quincy, fellow veterans, Blue Star families, and a special thank you to Gold Star families for joining us today. Please, please take time to get to know these special Gold Star families. Take time to know their truth and their sacrifice. I had the privilege of being here with you in December for Reads Across America. What a wonderful display of patriotism it was. And when I was asked to return on Memorial Day, I didn't hesitate because I knew you wouldn't hesitate to support and recollect those that have fallen on this Memorial Day. We hear the mournful... Let's see, Memorial Day is a time of remembrance and an opportunity to reflect on our past as a great nation. We hear the mournful strains of taps and it sharpens our focus on the blood that was shed, which became the mortar that built this great nation and it secured the freedoms that we enjoy today. On Memorial Day in 1982, President Ronald Reagan said, the United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. It has a cost. It imposes a burden. And just as they whom we commemorate were willing to sacrifice, so too must we, in a less final and less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves. As was touched on earlier, three years after the Civil War ended, May 5th, 1968, the head of the Grand Army of the Republic established Decoration Day as a time for the nation to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. Major John Logan declared that Decoration Day should be observed on May 30th. And while it started out commemorating the Civil War dead, it slowly evolved into Memorial Day and an opportunity to honor all the men and women that gave their lives in defense of this great nation. In 1971, it became a federal holiday to be recognized on the last Monday of May. This also created the unofficial start to summer. It has become an opportunity to dust off the lawn furniture, fire up the grill, and enjoy some downtime. But we know that it's so much more. There's a meme traveling around social media, and some of you have, may have uh, read it. It goes, we don't know them all, but we owe them all. That's more than a clever quote. It's a somber and sober truth. With over 1.3 million, 1.3 million wartime deaths, we can never pretend to know all of these brave men and women. But make no mistake, we owe each of them more than we can ever repay. Every one of these men and women was someone's son or daughter, brother or sister, husband or wife, and was known and was special to them. And those folks, we also owe a debt of gratitude for their sacrifice. I'd like to share with you the story of Petty Officer Nathan Bruckenthal of the United States Coast Guard from Stony Brook, New York. On April 24, 2004, Petty Officer Bruckenthal and two U.S. Navy sailors were killed while intercepting a waterborne suicide attack on Khor Alamiya, the oil terminal off the coast of northern Iraq in the Persian Gulf. And a 
account of the attack was included in the May 2004 issue of the U.S. Coast Guard Reservist Magazine, and it goes like this. In the early evening hours of April 24th, a Dow approached an oil terminal in the Persian Gulf. Bruckenthal, trained as both a boarding team member and a boarding officer, was accompanied by one other Coast Guardsman and five sailors from the United States Navy. The group boarded a rigid hull inflatable, taking off in pursuit. As the crew was poised to board the Dow, an explosion was detonated. Two Navy Petty Officers also died as a result of the waterborne attack. Petty Officer First Class Michael J. Bernicelli of Monroe, New York, and Petty Officer Second Class Christopher E. Watts, 28, of Knoxville, Tennessee. Abu Masad al Zakari of Al Qaeda in Iraq claimed responsibility for the attack. Petty Officer Bruckenthal was posthumously awarded the Bronze Star with a combat distinguishing advice, device, the Purple Heart, and the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. He's buried in Section 60, Site 7978 of Arlington National Cemetery on May 7, 2004. I tell you this story so it can be remembered. And I encourage you to learn other stories and keep them going. As we, ref as we reflect, let's not forget. When I was here in December, I challenged the young people in attendance that, given the opportunity for a research project, to wander this graveyard and choose a name of someone that gave the ultimate sacrifice and learn their story and keep it alive. That challenge still stands. So, this Memorial Day 2019, let's remember, reflect, and honor. Also, let's enjoy some good barbecue on this beautiful New England weather. Thank you, and God bless this great nation.